know this is Tar good evening good evening welcome to iraq aliyabunyoro in the diaspora this is caroline ajuna kibuka iraq aliyabunyoro in the diaspora uh, is supported by bkda uk and rise up in community inclusion uh ninyenda kubajuki ya mka kente iraq aliyabunyoro will be presented in two two languages that is english and runyoro runyoro is the language that is spoken by the people from bunyoro and Bunyoro is found in the western part of Uganda. Uh, ninyenda kuijuka awo bona, our prayers and thoughts uh, with all those who have lost their beloved ones. And uh, we pray that the, the, soul, the souls of the departed uh, may rest in peace. Nituongela no kuijuka our brothers in Tanzania. We are still praying for the country and we hope that God will take them through this dark time uh, of the, the season. Uh, with that little reminder, nkwenda, ni, nkwenda kubajuki ya mkake, ntirino inidio eira kari ya bunyoro in the diaspora, the voice of bunyoro in the diaspora, and I want to play for you a little song by one of our good schools in bunyoro, Destiny Aces, and the song is about uh, Rukirabasaija. Rukirabasaija means the king of bunyoro. So we're going to hear this amazing song, and thereafter we will bring, I will introduce to you our guest, and then the show will begin. Mutio muno abanyoro na abanyoro katin, our friends of Bunyoro, thank you so much for tuning in, Hairakari Abunyoro in the diaspora, and please enjoy this amazing song by Destiny SS, Rukiraba Saijam. Thank you.
Saija Agutamba by Destiny Aces, one of our schools in Ibunyoro found in Hoima. Hati, uh, with that amazing song, Nitusimamunaba Destiny, thank you for playing that amazing song about our, our king who is Omukama Rukirava Saija, Solomon Gafabusa, the current king of Bunyoro Kitara. That's the song was about him. Hati, Ninyendamu Nyikirize Mukake, allow me please today to welcome our, our, our guest tonight. And he is a very special guest, uh, and he is the the Omtalindwa Wurukurato wa Bunyoro Kitara Kingdom. That is the speaker of the, the Parliament of Bunyoro Kitara Kingdom. I am not going to waste a lot of time talking about him. I would like him to come and introduce himself to those of you who have who, who do not know him. He's been on the show before, but I know some people are new. Some people have just started joining us or following us, so I want him to introduce himself so that people get to know him, where he comes from, his clan, and everything that he wants to talk about himself. All I could say is the Omtali Indua, and that is the speaker 
ubunyoro kitara parliament otyo muno akiki we bale muno kuikiriza kuja kwa hamna itwe hanu uh, oli, i am being told you are in hoima hoima city that's where you're sitting right now because you had a meeting uh, you are heading uh, the meeting of murukurato uh, utosoboire garuka kampala kionka tusemerere muno kutwekt insa kino once again waikiza kuja kuba hamna itwe hanu no baza about the series of kabalega the great man omukama waitu and we've been doing this series for the last six months when you were on the show so hato garukire again to enlighten us more about this amazing king that we did a lot of things for us hati nkwenda ube yebaze hobi vike viku kuata ho abantu wa sole kumanya ni wota nike kubaza hasho yaitu mutuganyire muno our viewers we are very sorry we have had a few technical uh, technical problems but uh, we are with you and we will be going for an hour uh, regardless of the time we started ocho muna kiki uh, webale kuija kankuha akazi ndaro hati webaze ho ugambira bantu kiki kioli atenyi webale muno nsamire muno ku kuba kugaruka hamukutugunu uh, runde kisika kine kia zimburuka kia zimburuka kia maraka kia voice of unyoro yuke chapter Ibaralia inyowe ni nyowe Isaac Kalembe bilo maiso akiki. Munyoro kitara. Ndi munyoro kaswa. Nzaru wa hoima. Kurugo mkiaro kia duoli kidukuru. Omu igombo rali ya kitoba. Omu isadha li ya bugahia. Omu nyamasa za runi district ya hoima. Omu kama wabunyoro kitara. Uruganda rwange ndi mu byasi nzirengeza ni nzaruwo mukonga kati akuzira engabi ibi nibi bikunkwata bike na bike hati ingarukire gunu murundi kwanga kwa katan this is the fifth series of kabalega uh, the story of omukama cyo to kabalega nyikane mbaza kuruga i think july that when we had our first uh, program on kabalega briefly Kabalega was the 23rd Omukama of Unyoro Kitara under the Babito dynasty. He was the son of Omukama Kamurasi Mirundi Rukanama Wakanembe Kievambe the fourth. His mother was called Nyamutahingurwa Avoli from Abayonza clan in present day DR Congo, that is Bulega, where Kabalega's name was derived. Kabalega is, I usually, I usually call him a phenomenon. He's more than a hero. And the, this next month, April, is, I would say, the most important month in Kabalega's life because that's when. Uh, he was captured on the 9th of April, 1899. And maybe for your information, Kabalega was born on the 18th of June, 1853. He came to the throne in 1870, following the death of his father, Kamrasi, in 1869. Then he ruled for 28 years or 26 years, depending on how you look at it. Because from 1870 to 1899, those are 28 years. However, he was deposed by the British two years before, that is on the 30th of June, 1896. And that's when they installed his son, um, his son, uh, they deposed him and he installed one of his sons. And he, he died on the 6th of April, 1923. So two years from now, we shall be commemorating 100 years of his death. And we have, we, we as a kingdom, we are preparing uh, a big event to commemorate this event. However, this year, next month on Tuesday, we are going to commemorate Kabalega Day. That's the day he died on the 6th of April, 
1923 at Impumude in Jinja. As a kingdom, we have organized a memorial lecture which will be held at Imparo Royal Tombs, that's in Hoima Oiro City, on that day. And personally, I will be giving the keynote address on the theme, the role of Kavalega in transforming, in the transformation of Unyoro Kitara Kingdom. I say that Epo is an important month in Kavalega's death, uh, Kavalega's life, because that's when he died and that's when he was buried. He, was, he died on the, on the 6th of April, 1923, and was buried 20 days later. That's on the 26th of April, 1923, at Imparo. So basically, that's what I have to, to tell you about Kavalega's uh, background. However, tonight, we are going to look at the system of government under Kavalega. How did he manage to rule this mighty kingdom for the 28 years that he was king. So um, previously, his father had laid the ground, Kamras had laid the ground of setting up uh, a system of administration, which had been lacking previously. So we are going to look at the system of government uh, during Kavalega's reign. But before that, we, we have said that his father and other Babito kings had set up as developed a state structure that delegated powers and had checks and balances. The king, that's either whoever they were talking about, Kamrasi or his predecessors, was the political head of the kingdom. He had absolute authority over his subjects. Authority flowed from the king in descending order to a hierarchy of territorial administrators and palace officials who had a specific function. That means power Calculated, moved from the top, the king, the king would give an order or command, and then that order or that communication would move from the top up the grassroots through a hierarchy of administration. The highest ranking official included in the kingdom included the Abakama of Hanga. Those were the provincial governors. And from there, there were the Abajuara Kondo, or the crown wearers, and the Abakuru Baby Tebe, those were the councillors of the state. The major institutions of government included the Orukurato Orukuru Rihanga, that is the parliament, the one that I'm heading, uh, that I'm heading as I'm telling you right now, and the Rukurato Rumuvananu, that is the cabinet. So those two were important institutions in the kingdom. The Urukurato Urukuru Rihanga, that's the parliament, and the Urukurato Rumuvananu, or cabinet. Although uh, currently the, the, the nomenclature or the naming of these uh, institutions of uh, the kingdom have changed a bit. The Omukama appointed the county chiefs, those are the, the Abamasaza, to administer each county. Below them were the sub county chiefs, Abagomborozi who were the sub-county administrators. These received reports from the parish chiefs or Abemiruka and village or sub-parish chiefs, the Batongoli. And at the grassroots were the village sub-chiefs, Abakuru, the Migongo. So villages would be divided into subunits called the Migongo and these were headed by Abakuru and Gongo. So moving from the board, from the grassroots grass up to the, to the top, we had the Abakuru and Gongo, Abatongole, Abemiruka, Abagomborozi, then Abamasaza, who would report directly to the king. With this hierarch hierarchical arrangement, the king's message used to reach at the, grass at the grassroots very fast. Later on, the office of Omuhikirwa, or prime minister, was established by Kavalega's father, that is Kambrasi, Kiebambe IV. He's the one who introduced the office of Omuhikirwa, or prime minister, to head the civil service of the entire kingdom. The prime minister, as his name in Unyoro indicates, Omuhikirwa, was the head of the civil service in the kingdom. All the county chiefs reported to him, and he in turn reported to the king. 
So uh, briefly, that's the background. Now let's go straight to the system of government under Omukama Chuatu Kabalega. Uh, here we are going to look at, uh, at about 14 uh, levels of systems of government. And the, the, I have conveniently uh, uh, divided them uh, into 14. These, uh, the first one was the territorial administration. Bunyoro Kitara was a very big kingdom or empire, which was divided into provinces. These are the territorial administrators we are, administration that we are, we are looking at. And the, the territorial administration had three grades, one, two, three. The first grade was Abakama, Bobuhanga. Those were the provincial, our county chiefs, who were known also, variably known as the Bamasaza. These were the first grade who were appointed by the Mukama to rule over the different counties, which often differed in people, custom, dialect, and environment. During the reign of Kavalega, Bunyoro had 28 counties. So these are the uh, provincial administrations that we are talking about, which were headed by the Abamasaza or Abakama Bobuhanga. These officials were the highest ranking officials in the kingdom. They had deputies, those who deputized them, called Indabarava, who acted in their name either at the palace or in the counties. So these uh, um, deputies of the Bamasaza uh, acted in their name at either the palace or at the counties where these chiefs were located. The second grade was the Abakurwe Tongole or the sub-county chiefs. These officials, as they were variably called, formed the second grade chiefs. They were appointed by the Omukama to rule the divisions of the counties. We have said that Omukama appointed the Bamasaza. He also appointed the Batongole or Abakuru the Batongole. Then the third grade was the Abagomborozi. These, below the, these were below the Abakuru Bemugongo and they were the sub-county chiefs. They were the sub-county administrators. These received the reports from the parish chiefs of Emiruka who were below them and the village or sub parish chiefs of Atongoli. So you can see how the order of administration or system of government flowed from the king to the provincial, uh, provincial rulers of Amasada, then the Abakuru of Atongoli, and then Abagomborozi. And below them were the Abakungu. The Abakungu were the head men. These were the grassroots chiefs who administered, who administered sub-villages. Mm -hmm. So that's the first category of uh, a system of government under Kabalega. That's the territorial administration. I have said it had four uh, levels. The Abakama Bobuhanga or the Bamasaza. We had the Abakuru Tongole, who were the sub-county chiefs. We had the Abagomborozi and the, the Abakuru Bemigongo. So the second... Before, before you proceed, uh, I just want to ask a simple question. Uh, so do we still have this territorial administration in the current kingdom, in the current government of Kirabasaija uh, uh, Gafavusa Solomon? Yes, we do. Although at this, uh, as, of we, as we talk now, we are in the process of appointing all these officials. What I know is that now we have got sub county chief from, we have the uh, Abamasaza, those are the county chiefs. We had the Abatongole, uh, Abagomboros, that's the, the sub county chiefs. But Abakung, we have, those are the headmen and Abakuru Mugongo, we haven't yet appointed them. We are in the process of appointing all these ones. So th that is the territorial administration of the kingdom. The so second how, level... Sorry, how do we then manage the current, because it seems it's going to be, it's a big, it was a big government. How do you manage uh, controlling all these in the current situation? If you have three of them going, and you're going to tell us more about the Royal Estate Administration. So I could imagine this, the, 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 I know the Umhikira told us about some of these things, but I wonder how 
the current government of Burkina Basaija is able to look after all these uh, in, 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 in human resource, financial, are they, do they do all this work free of charge or are they paid? Uh, they, are, they are given a stipend and an allowance when we see it, for instance. And right now, the kingdom has procured motorcycles for the, uh, for the parish uh, and for the Abamasaza, and most likely we are going to, pro to, to procure equipment and necessary logistics for the Abatongole and Abagombores when they are all appointed. Yes, but uh, what is important to know is that uh, this is not a, a, a civil service, it is a service to the kingdom and our community. When you are appointed by the Kavumba, by the, the Mukama, it is an honor to serve. You can't say no that you want a salary. Whether your salary is there or an allowance is there, you have to serve your people. So that is the territorial administration. That's the first level of government, of governance or government that we had under Kavalega. The second level was the Royal Estates Administration, how the Royal Estate was administered. So under the Royal Estates Administration, we had a Mukama. These were the Royal Stewards. The Mukama were the Royal Stewards responsible for the administration of the Royal Estates. Here we are talking of Royal Estates, Estates belonging to the ruling family. The other ones were rulers of, territory, of, ter of geographical territories, be it pro uh, a province, uh, a county, a sub-county, a village, or a sub-village. But now these ones, the Amachimu Gomkama, ruled over the royal estates. They were appointed by the Mukama to rule the lands and estates that belonged to the Awago. Those were the consorts, or the royal consorts, or the, the, the wives of the king or the queens and Ababito Kati. So here we had the Avago, who were the queens or your consorts, and Ababito Kati, who were the princesses, uh, the female members of the Ababito clan, who were nominally in charge of the areas concerned. So if you are appointed to rule of a given estate, then you are. Ichumu, Yomukama, that is singular, and the plural, uh, Amachumu, Gomukama. For example, Vuruli County was tradi traditionally governed by Nyangoma, a princess. So was Busongora, which was a domain of Princess Kogere. These lands and estates were scattered over the kingdom, and the administration and defense were the direct responsibility of the royal stewards or Amachumu Gomukama on behalf of the, of the Umkama, or the king. These stewards were the equivalent of the sub-county chiefs at the um, geographical level, because these were administering estates, while the sub-county chiefs were administering uh, a given territory geographically. They, they may have provided a counterpoise to the sub-county chiefs of the territorial administration in the event of a rebellion or a succession war. What do we mean there? Just in case there was a rebellion, maybe led by the sub-county chief, then these uh, uh, these Amachumugomukama, who were the rulers of the estates of the king, did provide some counterbalance to, to quell such rebellions. Um, so that's the second level. The first one was territorial administration, the second one was the Royal Estates Administration, which was under the Amachimu Gomukama, who ruled these estates, which belonged to the Vago and the Abitokati. Then three, the, the third level was Abakungu, or headmen. So below the Royal Estates, the Royal Stewards were the Abakungu, who were the headmen. These administered the villages and estates of the Royal cons cons Consorts and Princesses. As headmen of both the territorial administration and royal estates, the Bakungu were the link between the people and the chiefs or the royal stewards. For them, basically, they were the link. Because on those estates, you are going to find people who have settled there, the subjects of the king. They can't be chased away. Who is linking them to the, to the, to the uh, Abago and the, the, the princesses or the, the kingdom in general? These were the Bakungu who were uh, 
the headman, the, the, in the, the English word for the, the Bakungu is headman. Then number four, we had Abakuru Venganda, clan heads. Venganda, those are clans. So each clan had a head. And in the kingdom, the, the clans were the pillars of the kingdom. By then, by, during the time of Kabalega, the reign of Kabalega, there were 72 clans. But as we talk now, we are about 170 clans. So each clan had, as it is now, they had a head who was called Omukuru Uganda, that's was singular, and Abakuru Venganda, plural. These were the clan heads. Within each system of government, where Abakuru Venganda or clan heads, every clan has always had its own head elected by all its members. For example, yesterday, we had our annual convention, we, the Babias clan, had our annual convention in Masindi, where we elected a new executive and a new clan head. The, clan, the head of the Babias clan is called Omutikia. So yesterday, we, ele we elected a new Omutikia, that is Solomon Kahua, uh, Solomon Kahua, uh, Abieri of Kihande Masi. So each clan... Kiribwa, Omtalindwa, Hati, as you're yes, telling please. us that every clan had to have a head, and you yesterday, the clan of the Abiansi, 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 you were able to elect your leader. Do other clans know about this, or do you tell every clan? Because I, I am a am, am, uh, Omuzira, Tamzira Kati, but I don't know the head of my clan, and I don't know when they have these meetings. So I want us to know from you, the Omtari Indua, when do you tell people that every clan, whether you've told every, every clan that they have to uh, choose to elect a clan leader, and when they do it? Uh, the, the, the kingdom is mobilizing the Vanyoro society, all the clans, to ensure that they are organized, they get to know each other, and they have a system of administration. Among other things, we want every clan to register with the kingdom. And we want every clan to have a constitution. We want every clan to have a totem. We want every clan to have uh, uh, an anthem. We want every clan to have a symbol. We want every clan to have an executive committee. Clans should meet with the yeah, annual yeah. during the annual general meeting. And clans have, have, many clans have already done it. Those who haven't done it, we are encouraging them to meet and uh, form these institutions of their own. And not only just for governance or getting to know, each, to, to know one another, but also to, to, help, to help the clan members to, to generate income so that they get out of poverty and they contribute to the social economic development of themselves, of their clans, of the areas, and of Euro Kingdom in, in, in general. So Talindu, for us, yes. So um, Talindu, do you plan to have 170 leaders, clan leaders in the Urukurato under the, the, the reign of uh, Rukirabasaija, Solomon Gafabusa? Uh, right now, the Urukurato is not composed of clan heads. That was during Kabalega's time. Right now, Kabumba or the Omukama appoints uh, people from different areas. Sub county, I think each sub county has got two representatives, each municipality, each area. Right now, we, we are one, we, our, our parliament, our Kurato, comprises 106 members who are directly appointed by Kabumba. And, but there are other. There are other levels of meeting the clan heads. For instance, the second deputy prime minister, right honorable Jonathan Nyenduha Mutiti, doubles as the minister for culture affairs. So he's the one who is directly responsible for mobilizing these clans to form these uh, institutions and organs. And the kingdom, the prime minister, Omuhikirwa, has been meeting clan heads at various levels and this is a continuous process. We want to mobilize all clans so that they can 
uh, embrace the kingdom by forming themselves in strong institutions at clan level. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. So I was talking about Uganda. these are the heads of the clans and the uh, currently, we want to we want to strengthen our clan because uh, the clans are the pillars of Nyore Kitara Kingdom. Without clans, the kingdoms cannot be. So, um, what all matters pertaining to inheritance fell within their jurisdiction, and they advised the Omukama accordingly. That was during Kabalega's time, when a county chief died. It was the duty of the clan head to bring the heir before the Omukama for confirmation in his appointment. Second, they had an important role to play in the kingdom. Whether this uh, role will be revisited depends on Kamumba and as he will be advised by his advisors or as, as, he, as he sees or fit to implement. Then fifth, we had Abakuru Bemirwa. These were the advisors on rituals and regalia of the kingdom. The clan heads selected their advisors on rituals because many clans had hereditary duties in the palace. The, the association of the clans with the territorial and palace administration contributed to the stable and orderly government in the kingdom. What is important yet not, and our audience and our chain, the moderator, is that each clan has got specific roles or function it plays in the Bunyoro society and the palace. Let me use let me use my clan, uh, the Babiasi. Um, what role do we play? Uh, the Babiasi, first of all, we were the territorial rulers of Bugoma. Bugoma, that's the cradle land of the Babiasi clan. So the king could not for that for that for that count, whether it was a county or the province, the Mubiasi had to be the head of Bugoma. Two, we were the priests. Whenever there was a, whoever there was a, uh, maybe need for prayers, said uh, drought and what have you. The Omutikia, who was the head of the Babias clan, had to, to pray. He was a Muramansi, Kuramidensi, so that uh, peace, stability, uh, fecundity, fertility, productivity returns to the kingdom. And in the palace itself, we were responsible for the royal fire, lighting the fire, keeping that fire uh, alive. The, fire, the royal fire is not supposed to go out. It's, it dies out when the king has passed on. So that was the duty of the Babias clan. Also, we are responsible for, we are entertainers. We, 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 we carried one of the drums in the palace. So one of the drums in the palace is uh, played by a Mubiasi. And also, um, uh, just those are enough for the time being. But you can see, like for instance, the, 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 the Bayaga were responsible for keeping the royal drums. They kept, even when Kabalega was deposed, they kept the royal drums for more than a hundred for more than a hundred years. And they returned just, them when just to come in, um, Talindo, Yes, you've told us the BRC clan what they're supposed to do, and you are telling us the other clan. But I just want to ask, do all the clans currently know what their role was in the kingdom then? Or what their role is in the in the palace of the king? No, yes, because each clan has got a role to play. Um, no, because um, since the uh, since the since the since 1967, when Uganda became a republic and kingdom were abolished, these roles um, went into abeyance. People didn't know. It is only a, a few faithful and loyal people who kept the, the, the fire of, of uh, the royal fire burning. And when the kingdom was, was reinstated, when the, uh, the current Omukama, uh, Dr. Solomon Gafarusa Iguru, was enthroned on the 11th of June 1994, these, these institutions were resurrected. However, we need to sensitize many Banyoro and many clans on their roles and important. That's why we have started by saying let clans get organized, have lead, uh, clear leadership, and the, uh, get get to know one another, have these annual general meetings or uh, annual conventions, and then if they don't know or if they have forgotten their roles, they will be reminded by the Abakuru uh, Bemirwa who are currently 
available. As I think as of we talk now, we have about 69 abakuru beemirwa. Those as the ritual heads, the, 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 the advisors on ritual and regalia of the kingdom. Um, the fifth, the sixth level of administration was abakuru beebitebe, who were also called the abajuara kondo. These were councillors or crown, crown wearers. Known as the Abajuara Kondo, this, the, crowd, the crown order of the sacred guild were members, were councillors, they were advisors. They were invested by the Mukama for distinguished services rendered to the kingdom. The offices were hereditary if the Mukama wished. For instance, if your father was Omujuara Kondo and he passed on and you had heir, you, you inherited that title, you, bec you became Omujuara Kondo, but only if the king wished. If he didn't wish, he could um, um, maybe uh, remove the title from you or appoint any person who has offered distinguished service to Alid, the... Oh, yes, now uh, we are going to go off for a little break, but just to summarize and say what you have done, you've told us so far is, uh, what I'm seeing is Bunyoro, we are having a great work, great work to do ahead of us, especially when it comes to clans. And you've said you're starting to work on the clans and making sure that each clan has got to know, has got a leader, a clan leader, and they've got to learn what they are supposed to do in the palace of the king. This is a very good, a very big job ahead of us. And I'm asking the kingdom to guide people on different social media like Voice of Bunyoro, the radio is in Bunyoro, TV is in Bunyoro, so that people get to know all the things because it is important for us to know our background, our culture. We have got to know our clans and our clan leaders. As I've said to you, I'm a Muzirakati, but Chimanide, the head of my clan. So this is the work that we have ahead of us. And I hope all the Banyoros and the Banyoro Katis and the friends of Bunyoro are listening today, are picking up these things that we have got to do, the action points from Omutalindwa's speak, uh, uh, discussion tonight. So Ninyenda Pusaba Omukuru Omutalindwa, unless you have something quick to say before we go off the, for a break, I want us to go for a short break and we'll return and then you will continue with the, the discussion and probably we will soon close the show. Ocho, yes, I can before see you go, before you go for the, before Before we go... Before you go for the break, this is for your information. Your clan has got three names. Devafunjo, Vazira, um, Abaligira. The current head of the Bafunjo, Vazira, Abaligira is Fred Kakoraki. Fred Vyaruanga Kakoraki, a moat from Titova sub county. That's the head of your clan. This information, and I'll be in touch with Freddy. Uh, um, from Kitova, and I will be amazed to get in touch with him. If you could give me his number, that would be great. Katugaruke, then we'll come back after that. Enjoy the song by Kabalega. Uh, it's Kabalega and it's by Destiny SS as well. Mutio will be back soon.
so gan so lang mo a jolly aruru matale ka wuro akaba ne ka onje ba buluri bunyara tolo kita kwenda na busongola matale ka wuro akaba ne ka pale ka nyai ke saki mo wuro Thank you. Welcome back from the break. This is Iraq Aliyabunyoro in the Diaspora presented by Caroline Ajuna uh, Kibuka Atenyi. Uh, Mwevale kuwa kulidi za kazi nako kanihire kabaire kaba, kaba, kaba karungi. Hatini yenda to acknowledge uh, mkulo mtali indua okui eh, owe, owe kitinisa mtali indua wa mkurato wabunyoro kitara nyikiriza Nse, I appreciate our viewers, our listeners tonight. And then I will be able to let you continue with your discussion. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Deize Biaruhanga uh, uh, Amoti, for tuning in. And Biaruhanga Amoti is saying, we serve with all our hearts without expecting any payment. As Omtalindo has already told us, thank you so much, uh, Amoti, for informing us about that. And then he also says, Abahinda clan. Can we meet annually? We have a constitution, we have an anthem, we are looking towards registering our association as a community based organization. Hinda Hinda, wow, that is amazing. And they are doing amazing work. Uh, still, Omkuru Amot Deize Nawe Akiavaza, 
kionkati njia kubimara yobyo nebya handi kire uh, wekitinisa akiki ni njia kusaba ugaruke yo mchati sizai tuzinu orole abantu ba wevike iwa kuhandika or what questions they have for you because the show is limited we can't read everyone's question Ali, uh, Alan J. Abitegeka, thank you so much for tuning in. And he, uh, Alan is saying, I'm told Omjuara Nkondo is an equivalent of a lord. How true is that? That is a question for you, Omtali Indwa. Uh, Alan J. Abitegeka is asking, he's told that Omjuara Nkondo is, in, is an equivalent of a lord. How true is that? Then Christine Majara also, thank you so much. One of our BKDA um, uh, a, a member, a committee member, and she's saying, Cla a, can a clan head be headed by a woman? That is a question from Christine Majara, uh, one of our executive members of BKDA. Uh, Samuel Kakembo Kitone Arali is also asking, would it be possible to have an organization structure of leadership during as as it was during Kabalega's rule. Ogo ni wamkuru Sam Kitone, Vice Chair wa Wai Tuhanu, Maureen Kunihira, Nawe Ariyo, thank you so much for tuning in, and Mosti Bingi, I'm live from Hoima City, thank you so much for tuning in, Mwesigwa, Patrick, thank you so much for tuning in as well, uh, Lily Amos at Gonza, thank you so much for tuning in. Kirungi at uh, he says, thanks for the show, Omtalindua. Bakusi, mawebale muno, kuva, hasho ya itu no kutuegese, wabiona ibyo tuegeseze. So those are the few questions from our viewers. If you could please answer them and then we proceed with our discussion. Otyo muno, owektinisa, kiki, kankwe akazindaru. We were uh, just to just to uh, thank Omuhinda uh, Kati Daisy Viaruhanga Hinda Hinda, it is Gamba Viasi Viasi. We were Kuhinda, Amoti, it is a voluntary service. And it's an honor, more than a voluntary service, it's an honor. We shouldn't be looking for employment. This is not a salaried office. It's an honor to serve Kabumba. That's my answer to you to Daisy Garwanga Amoti. Alene Abitegeka. Uh, is true Omjuara Kondo is you know, is uh, homologous or similar to the Lord, the title of Lord in the UK and other uh, Western institutions. But uh, ours here, Omjuara Kondo is the crown wearer. He is uh, appointed for this is given this title for distinguished services and like in in uk this title is hereditary it can be um it can be uh, taken on by the heir uh, once the of the uh, senior omjuara kondo dies or passes on i was giving an example of the uh, uh, prominent omjuara kondo right now is uh, dr fred kawagambe kalisa aten who is the chairperson of the Royal Commission is Omjuara Kondo. But we have others, and we've had many before. Um, Christine Majara, can a clan be headed by a woman? It could be even any institution by that. Bunyoro is a patrilineal set whereby oh, oh, we, we give prominence to the male lineage or to, the, to male people, to, to men and women and boys. However, we've had precedents before. I think Bunyoro is the only kingdom which has had a female, should I say Omkama, or a, a queen, uh, Masamba Gawin. I think he was the, the, the 11th, if I'm not mistaken, 11th king or Omkama. I don't want to use the title Omkama because Omkama refers to a male king, but she ruled for a, a few months before she was assassinated by, by her brother. So we are jealous of achievements and the, 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 the conservative Vanyoro who didn't feel ruled by um, females. But even during the, 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 Bachues, the reign of the Bachues, uh, we had a female ruler. Usually, the mainstream history says that the Bachues had only three kings, Ndahura, uh, Morindwa, 
and the Wamara. However, after Wamara, there was a female commander who tried to, to rally the, 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 the Wachuweza and the people around him. She was called Njinaki, literally meaning, what do I say? So she ruled Vinyoro from Busongora and, and her, her three sons, uh, one of them ruled Ankole, another one, I think, went to Rwanda, and the another one, I think, uh, Busongora, when she had person. So we've had female rulers. So if we've had female rulers, why don't we have um, uh, uh, female heads of clan? We haven't had any, I haven't had any, but it's because of the uh, patrilineal nature of our society, maybe hopefully with this gender sensitization, gender, gender uh, affirmative action, uh, it, I won't be surprised, I wouldn't be surprised if we had a female ruler. In fact, even being the, in, in, among the Babito, there is uh, Batebe, who is the official, uh, the official sister of the king. She heads all the princes, all the Babito Katis. So she's an important office holder in the palace, as we shall see. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Can we reinvent, reinvent the Kabarega's system of organization? Food for thought for us. Uh, but each king is, is free to, uh, to decide on the type of uh, administration or leadership that they feel like. But uh, to me, I think this, we could revise this because there have been, I think, um, uh, a move away from what Kavalega did, maybe for the good of the kingdom. Being in most Akik, the photographer and the uh, BTV, thank you for, for, for tuning in. Uh, engineer Patrick Mwesigwa, Omubi to Akiki, thank you for tuning in. Kirunga Tuki and others, I'm very grateful. So let's continue. We stopped at number six, which was Abakuru Bebitebe, or Rabajwara Kondo. Omtali Indwa, there is a very important question here uh, from uh, Alan J. Abitegeka. What caused the multiplication of the 72 clans during Kabalega's time to, six, to 170 clans now? How did that happen? That is a very important question. I think that you need to address. Then you will continue with the, sh uh, with the discussion. Okay, I've told I've talked about the, the uh, your clan, who which has got some three names or in fact, uh, we, the kingdom has received a petition that, that people want to break away from uh, your clan. By the way, uh, I'm sorry to, to divert this. The Abazira, Abafunjo, Abaligira, and in the petition that we received a few a few months ago, was that there is no clan with three names. How come that the three are being bundled together? And that the, you have different totems. But the major, according to our initial findings, preliminary findings, the major reason for schism, schisms or break the breakup of clans and the formation of subclans are misunderstandings. Or, uh, pertain, or maybe one of the key reasons, one of the key factors is um, marriage. You are a Muligira, you've met a Muligira Kate, a beautiful Muligira Kate somewhere whom you don't know even her background, and you bring her as a potential wife only to discover that you are you belong to the same clan. And when the elders tell you that you can't marry, you can't marry a clan mate, then you say, For me, I'm leaving this clan, I'm going to form mine. That's one of the major reasons. By the way, uh, I think that the, 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 the dynamics of clans, um, clans have been breaking away from others. For instance, uh, we the Babiasi are a subset of the, the Bachuezi. We broke away from the Bachuezi. I won't tell you the background because of time. Maybe we shall have another session where I'll be talking about my clan. I've written a book about the Babiasi clan, which I'm going to publish shortly. I have all, all that background. Even in Yudeba, the Babito, they have sub-clans. We have the Bapanyarwa, who, were, who descended from Nyarwa, the firstborn of Kiyomiya, because Kiyomiya gave, uh, produced four children from Nyatuo. That's Nyarwa, the firstborn, then the twin, the Singoma Pugaru Kidhu, that one became the king, uh, Kato Kimera, and then Kiza. So the Bapanyarwa uh, descend from Nyarwa. Then we have the Bapina, who descend from the Mupina, who was one of the claimants of the throne. So among the, the, the Babito themselves, you are going to find their sub-clans sub, sub, sub and the, or subdivision. Sub and this is not just restricted uh, or a preserve of the Babito clan, but also other clans. 
And if for your information, during Kabari, Kabarega's raid, there was a clan, I've forgotten the name. I talked about it when we were talking about his, uh, I think it was the second session that we had in the, in the, uh, in the parliamentary, in the recruiter session of 1894. He, he decreed that that clan, that clan be uh, removed from uh, the list of clans of New York Sara Kingdom because they were his spies. He sent them to Uganda to all, and they infiltrated the Uganda kingdom and other neighboring kingdom. By the way, they are the ones even who tried, who attempted to poison uh, Baker at Valigota Isansa in 1872 at the Battle of Valigota Isansa because Kawalega sent poison beer. So these people who uh, infiltrated Baker's camp and they tried to. Discuss. So Kawalega removed that clan, but should we leave it out now because they performed their duty or should we bring it back? So the issue of clans, the number of clans and what have you is a matter that cannot be discussed at this forum. But what is important to know is that over the years, clans have been, uh, sub members of the certain clan have been breaking away uh, uh, from the, the mainstream clans, forming their own clan. For instance, the, the Bazazi, the Bazazi are of a choice, but because they, they were producing at a fast rate, they, they called themselves Abazaz because Bazaraga Wanavain, they were producing many children. But originally, they are virtuous. So uh, let's not uh, waste time on this on these issues of how, how clans form and how the number of clans that have, uh, we have right now. In fact, right now, we are trying to establish the number of clans that we have. The number of 170 is according to my research, which I, which I, which I, which I wrote in the edition of New York Kingdom magazine, Ruhangar, when we were celebrating 25 years of Kabumba's reign. Otherwise, the kingdom's policy is that let's try to, to stop the breaking up of clans, from forming a new, new clan just on the basis of misunderstanding between the clan members, be it marriage or whatever, let's, let's maintain um, uh, uh, few, the original clans. We have a few minutes to go. Could we just continue wrap up the discussion and tell us uh, so that we can a bit time and uh, see how we can I was talking at I was talking about the different levels of uh, another system of government of Kabalega is super number six. Number seven was the Orukurato Orukuru Wihanga, which is the parliament, which which was abbreviated to Orukurato, which I'm currently heading the Orukurato Rukama Wabunyo Rukutara, but in the full, which is Orukurato Orukuru Oruihanga, the Abunyo Rukutara, abbreviated as Orukurato. This was the parliament and still is the parliament, as it was an assembly of all senior chiefs and officials from all over the kingdom who met three or four times a year, according to the, to the necessity under the discretion of the Rukama. We have maintained this session, we, we meet on a Changed right now, the king appoints people from various constituencies, including the youth, women, and the and the from different geographical areas. We even have members, uh, representative of members of Banyero from the diaspora. But during Kavalega's reign, the composition of this Rukurato were all senior chiefs and officials from all over the kingdom. And it was composed of Domukama. Domukama would sit in the Rukurato. Nowadays, he doesn't. He just comes and he just officiates at the, at the opening of the court session, but he doesn't attend the session. So it, then Kabalega attended, the county chiefs attended, the councillors and other officials of high rank also attended. This is important. It was presided over by the Mutalingwa. This is a new title, but the speaker presided over the Rukurato. That's number seven. Number eight, Orukurato Rumuvananu. That is the cabinet. Here, uh, there is, uh, especially the new, the new generation may find this one a bit settling because right now we have the Royal Commission, which is called, which in, in vernacular is Akatebe Kavunanu or Kavunanu which is headed by Omujwara Kondo, Dr. Fred Kabaganda Kalisa. But during Kabalega's time, the cabinet was called Orukurato Ruavovunanu. And before the parliament was summoned, 
that's the the recruiter the recruiter room banano that's the cabinet met decide in secret all matters of policy and the agenda for discussion by parliament the members of the cabinet were one the omukama kabale himself two the mugema the mugema was the head of all the councillors three the bamroga bamroga was the principal chief who acted as a regent when the omukama died and until another king was enthroned had the charge of all the royal tombs for all the county chiefs and a few other people of importance these were the, the members of the recruiter Rumuvanani. The Omukama was also chairperson of several courts and tribunals to set public, private, and domestic issues, as we shall sit down. Number nine, Orkurato Ruomurugo. This is the court of the royal enclosure within the Karuzika, within the palace. There was also uh, Orkurato there, which was called Orkurato Ruomurugo. In the Orkurato Ruomurugo, that is the court of the royal enclosure, Kavalega settled the disputes between members of the royal family and the commoners. Members of the, the Babito and the Babitokati and the commoners who were staying in the palace, should they have issues, the Mukama would call this uh, session or this uh, gathering and settle issues. However, for matters pertaining to the royal members of the royal family, there were two important figures who were responsible. That's the Okwiri, who was the head of the Babito clan. The Omukama was not the head of, and is right now, and now still is not the head of the Babito clan. It is the Okwiri who is the head of the Babito clan. On the other hand, Deva Tebe is the head of the princesses. She is the official, uh, she's the official sister of the king, and she settles matters pertaining to princesses of the Babito Kati. Number 10, Urkurato Ruabarwara. This was the court of the kingdom. Here, the Omukama settled disputes between any of the people who lived in the kingdom, whether they were chiefs, free men, or commoners. He was assisted by his principal counselors. Trials were held in public, and witnesses were called to give evidence. Sometimes, if the Omukama was ill or busy elsewhere, the head of the counselors or county chiefs took his place. Number 11, Orukurato Rua Bamuena Gaho. Orukurato Rua Bamuena Gaho. In English, this was, this was the court of the Eastern tribes, tribes from the East. Amahanga Kuruga, Butuka Izova. So for them, they had their also uh, gathering, that is the Orukurato Rua Bamuena Gaho. Um, Talindua, we are sorry we are running out of time. Could you just summarize the remaining uh, uh, part, uh, uh, sessions of uh, um, Kama's uh, government, uh, whatever we had, and then we can do a conclusion. You do your I last. Think you can do it. So you okay. can do this the last two months because we are running out of time. Yes. This was the court of the Eastern Province, Orokurato Wakiakato. This was the court of the pastoralists. Uh, this was the court of the northern and western tribes. This was the court of the royal herdsmen. Uh, so, uh, in, in short, those were the first 14 levels of, under the system of administration of Kavalega. If I may summarize them, I'll say that the first one was the territorial administration. I, uh, the second one was the royal estate administration. The third was the, uh, the third was the Abakungu or headmen, the fourth was the Abakurbe Nganda clan heads, the fifth was Abakurbe Mirwa, advisors on rituals and regalia of the kingdom, uh, the sixth was the Abakurbe Vitebe or Bajwara Kondo, who were the councillors, uh, the seventh was the Orkurato, who was the parliament, then the eighth was Orkurato Mubananu, which was the cabinet, and the, the, eighth, the ninth was Orkurato Mubanu, which was the court of the royal enclosure. Then the tenth was Rukuratu Ruabarwara, which is the court of the kingdom. And the eleventh was Rukuratu Ruabamuenagaho, that's the court of the eastern tribes. And the twelfth was Rukuratu Ruakiakato, that's the court of the pastoralists. And the thirteenth was Rukuratu Ruabinyonyi, that's the court of the northern and western tribes. And lastly, Rukuratu Ruamusanga, or the court 
of the royal herdsmen. So our audience, uh, that's the system of, of uh, administration that existed, that prevailed during Kabarega's reign, but I, I've just been, because of time, I've just rushed through. However, take note that this is a part of the book that I'm writing uh, entitled The Life and Times of, Kam of Mkama Chato Kabarega. Hopefully this book will be published on 2023. That's two years from now when we shall be commemorating a hundred years of the demise of Mkama Chato Kabarega. In conclusion, I started by saying that on, April, on Tuesday, April the 6th this year, we are going to have Kavalega, to commemorate Kavalega Day under the theme, the role of Kavalega in the transformation of Unyoro Kitara Kingdom. And I will give a keynote address to invited, uh, invited um, guests. We expect 400, 500 people turn up and the venue will be Imparo Royal Tombs, uh, that's two miles from Hoima Oil City, it is within Oil City uh, along Masin Road. And the, with that, I think uh, it was my honor to address the audience, viewers and listeners, and the social media, the geeks, uh, who have been following us at various, from various uh, social media fora. And Ateni, thank you for hosting me. And uh, Sam, Samuel Kitani, Arari, thanks a lot. And the entire team, uh, we are very grateful and I look forward to discussing another important topic, the, the, the sixth uh, Kabalega series, if I'm invited. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Omtari Indua, or Kurator Wabunyoro Kitara Kingdom, Okuija Kuba Kutkwiki. The man that we all adore, Every Munyoro is proud to be a Munyoro because of this great man's work. We are so happy and so excited to have hosted you once again to talk about the system or the governance, uh, the way he was able to manage the whole of Munyoro Kitara that was so huge at that time and he ruled it perfect, perfectly well as history tells us. Wabale muno umtalindwa waitu kani nituija kuba ntukueta once again to continue with this series of Mkama Kabalega. Aba viewers waitu umtalindwa walukurato warabunyo lukitaranko watu gambire please keep note be there on the 6th of April 2021 to commemorate this amazing day that they are organizing, that the kingdom is organizing. And as Omtarindu Anko Watu Gambire, he will be giving a keynote on that day. Abanyoro Nabanyoro Kati, thank you so much for tuning in once again. Her a voice of Bunyoro in, uh, in the diaspora, which is supported by Bunyoro Kitara Development Association and Rise Up uh, Inclusion, commun uh, Community Inclusion. And Kabulikiro Ninyewe Karola Inajuna Kivuka, Atenyi Omzirakati. Nituija Kuman to Garuka again next week, same time, 6 30, with a very amazing guest that you cannot wait, miss. And he will be talking about the Bunyoro we want. So please tune in and listen to him uh, next week, 6 30, same time. Nituija Kuba, Nituba, Tuliham Nai Nyuhanu, Ham Kutugwaito, Gua Voice, uh, Voice Show Media UK, Kandi, Nituenda Hati Kugenda, uh, Kuruga Halaini. Kionka ni tugenda kubalekera akazina akarungi muno talking about the great works of Kabalega umkama utubaire ntubazaho today. Mukanyumire, please do not go off until the song comes to an end. Thank you so much once again for tuning in and I wish you a very uh, blessed and a very good week ne uh, next ahead of us. Mukama Alinde, uh, Mutiomuno Abanyoro Nabanyoro Kati and Friends of Bunyoro. Bye. Ekinde serenta bijwaire nyowe ekinika kyange kyaira tisoboire kugumisiriza tibikyale bya maino heno kunyoro bukya tumikirizi kwaka irenka no tusasulwe Eriso limu nilio liku itagire Edu tuya ito vita kuangwa Eihano likaguza ya libo ine Merambana bakatu 
chukia Kabale gaya ugaye we mwona Ya ye hayo ke mansi Aba kazo wa itu waka hambwa Kabele bendi ye jaku nyoro Bebi itu ya itu wika tuwa rwa Nero baira batu imukiremu Mwiju ke mansi kabale Bebi ya kolire kunyoro Mwire kwenyuma Kansabe umara mizu itu enya babu nyoro Ebi oma tu kubisovora, abe pako zaitu kumi na ibiri mu 